In this video, we're going to dig a little bit deeper into the properties of the harmonic oscillator wave function, more specifically the Hermite polynomials and the normalization constant. So, uh, so we always know we have to have a normalization constant for a wave function, and for the harmonic oscillator wave function, it's going to be a little bit different from the particle in the box because it's actually going to depend on what the quantum number is, right? So if you, if you have a, a quantum number of 1, that normalization factor is going to be different if you have a, a quantum number of 10, right? So we'll look Look into that one. First, I want to uh, kind of peel back the curtain on this Hermite polynomial. And in the last video, we talked about how it's a component of the harmonic oscillator wave function that allows us to have, um, that allows for the, for the wave function to be able to decay with larger and larger force constants, which was a necessity for being able to, um, to be able to model the harmonic oscillator problem in quantum mechanics. And so these are the Hermite polynomials, right? Um, like I said, deriving these things can get very dicey and mathy, and I think it's not really important to understanding this physical question. Um, the Hermite polynomials are useful to us because you can see that they grow exponentially with respect to the, the number that defines the Hermite polynomial. So when you're at zero, you just got one, right? Nothing. Uh, and as you grow, the power grows, that, that, that main leading power grows. So to, to the point where when you're at the sixth Hermite polynomial, you have a polynomial that is raised with x to the six, right? So very useful in getting our wave function to decay quickly um, for all cases, um, and, and an essential component of the harmonic oscillator wave function. So um, so that's the Hermite polynomials. Uh, there, there are many of them, but for all intents and purposes, um, for at least for an introductory physical chemistry class, the first five or six should get you all the way to the end of the course. Um, anything higher, you probably are doing some advanced stuff with Hermite polynomials. Um, for there, But not only do you need to you know, be aware of the form of the Hermite polynomials, there are some very crucial relationships for the Hermite polynomials that you need to be familiar with. Uh, the first is that they are part of a series of differential equations. Um, this is the first line here, uh, where it relates the Hermite polynomial to its first derivative and its second derivative, right? So it's a um, solution to this differential equation. Also, it has a recursion relationship with adjacent Hermite polynomials. So you have h nu here in the middle. It's related to h nu minus one and nu plus one via this relationship. This can be really useful to simplify integrals. Um, and uh, speaking of integrals, there's an important integral relation for the Hermite polynomials, which we're actually going to use in this video to derive the normalization constant. So if you have two Hermite polynomials with a Gaussian and an integrand, um, if those two Hermite polynomials are not the same, then that integral is going to be zero, just vanishes, right? Um, if they are the same, then you get this result, right? Pi, uh, square root pi two nu uh, times nu factorial, right? So either way, uh, whether the, the Hermite polynomials are the same or different, you know that in the integral, they will produce this uh, very useful result, right? So um, if you have two Hermite polynomials being multiplied by a Gaussian, you know what the result is going to be. You don't have to uh, figure out those integrals in any uh, more difficult way. Okay, so let's start normalizing this guy. So just as a refresher, uh, keep in mind that in order to normalize a wave function, right, we're gonna take the wave function, the uh, complex conjugate of the wave function times the original wave function. We wanna integrate over all space and it has to be equal to one, right? This is the property of a normalized wave function. So we want to consider the unnormalized uh, harmonic oscillator wave function. So consider the unnormalized wave function. Right, so if we were to just write out an unnormalized uh, harmonic oscillator wave function, then we'll have, you know, just this Hermite polynomial and the Gaussian that's coming along for the ride. Right. So um, so this dimensionless variable Y, I mentioned it in a previous video, it's equal to X over alpha where alpha is related to your spring constant. The only reason we're doing this redefinition is for the sake of the Hermite polynomials. You'll notice that you have to have a single defining variable 
in order to use these Hermit polynomials, right? So it's related to X. So that's the whole reason why we're using this dimensionless variable Y, so that we'll be able to chuck this stuff into the Hermit polynomials. Um, so, so don't think too much physically about that variable. Um, just This is all just to fit into the Hermit polynomials. Okay, but it does present a conundrum because we need to relate this Y explicitly to not just X, but also DX, right? So in order to relate, y to x and dx right because if we're going to integrate right we're going to have to integrate over a single variable so we're going to have to change everything from integrals with respect to x to integrals with respect to y so we know that y is equal to x over alpha right so we've got that up there um, if we solve this for x then that means x is equal to alpha y and if we take the derivative with respect to x, then, or if we, you know, we take the derivative of both sides, right? We'll have dx on the left. Alpha is still a constant, right? So alpha was just related to the mass and the spring constant. So, um, so it's just a constant. So it's out front here. And then we just have dy, right? So dx is related to uh, dy via alpha, right? So, um, so we have these variables here. So now we know that we want to integrate over all space. So we want to integrate over all space. But we have to redefine that space, right? Because we, we can't just uh, integrate with respect to x. We have to use our Hermit polynomials. So we're going to have to recast this integral, right? So initially, we know we're going to want to integrate from uh, negative infinity to positive infinity, right? We're going to have the complex conjugate of our wave function times our original wave function. And we're going to be uh, differentiating with respect to x. Now, what we need to do here is to turn dy into or dx into dy, right? So basically, all we have to do is substitute this alpha dy. So alpha is a constant, so it can sit outside of the integral. And then we have psi star x. Or changing over our variables here to y. Psi y dy. Right. So it's very important that we related um, y to dy to dx so that we could make this change. Now we can integrate with respect to our Hermit polynomials. Right. OK, so let me go to a new slide here. So basically we can plug in what we've got and solve for our normalization factor. Right. So uh, so we can plug in. And solve. So our general integral here, just as a reminder from the previous slide, right? You've got uh, negative infinity to positive infinity, psi star y, psi y, dy. So if we're plugging everything in here, right? So we're still gonna have alpha on the outside. We got negative infinity to positive infinity, and we're gonna have the square of our Hermit polynomial and just for the sake of uh, instruction here is I'm going I'm to just write them both out like this, right? So we got H nu Y, H nu Y. And when you square that Gaussian, right? So let me go back to the previous slide so we can see, right? So now we have to square this guy, right? So when you multiply E to the negative Y squared over two times E to the negative Y squared over two, you just get E to the negative Y squared. Right, dy. Okay, so we have this integral, right? We have a Hermit polynomial times a Hermit polynomial times a Gaussian. We can use that uh, integral relationship that we had on the previous slide here, right? We can make use of this guy. Since we're just squaring the same wave function, nu is going to the, um, the quantum number is going to be the same, so it's going to be where nu prime is equal to nu. So that means we're going to have this as our solution. Right. So we can actually plug that in here. So our solution here is going to be alpha. Square root pi. To new. Times new factorial. Right. So now to get the normalization factor, we just have to put this result under one and take the square root, uh, just like we always do. So getting the normalization factor.
right? So we just plug in here. So the normalization factor is going to just be equal to one over alpha square root pi to new times new factorial, All right? Raised to the one half. Okay, so this is gonna be valid for each value of new. So this is gonna be for each value of new. So for each of those values is actually going to be different, right? The normalization factor is going to depend on what your quantum number is, but this gives us our general normalization factor to where each time we don't have to necessarily solve for it, we just gotta plug it into this equation, right? Okay, so now that we've got our normalized wave function, now we're ready to start calculating some properties of the harmonic oscillator. So um, in the next video, what we're going to do is calculate the average displacement uh, for the harmonic oscillator, right? So just like with the particle in the box, you could get an average position. Here we're going to get an average displacement for the harmonic oscillator and talk about that property.